What's up, Boss Deep fam, to another edition of Boss Deep with Devin and Jovan, where we dive Boss Deep in the hottest stories in sports. It's your boy Devin here with the first of many NFL divisional breakdowns because it is the month of August, and you know what that means. NFL football every Sunday till Super Bowl Sunday. And that's it's a great time for football fans around the world and a perfect time to start dropping our breakdowns. So let me get started. First division I'll be breaking down this season is the NFC South. In first place of, of this division, I have the defending champions, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So with their ceiling, I have 14-3. and three. Their floor, I have 11-6. and six. And my projected record for them is 12-5. and five. Uh, Why? Because they have all the hype coming into the season especially with returning every single starter uh, that they had last season. Um, in terms of coaching staffs, I have them ranked one in the division. Main reason because they have Todd Bowles as the, their defensive coordinator, who is a phenomenal defensive mind. And you have Tom Brady at the home, a healthy Tom Brady at that. He, he won the Super Bowl with an injury last season. So you have that. They have the best playmakers in the division uh, with Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Tony Brown at the receiver core. Then at, they got the three-headed monster at tight end with Gronk, Bray, and now Howard coming off an injury. And they have the second-best offensive line in, in the division. So offense, I don't think, is a question. Then they now have uh, they added Gio Bernard to that backfield with you know what they already had in Leonard Fournette and uh, Ronald Jones. So, yeah, they got depth. So I'm not surprised that they rank where they rank. Then defensively, the only question mark I really have is their secondary, specifically their corners. I'm not a huge believer in their corners. They did prove themselves at the end of last year. Throughout four, throughout their Super Bowl run, which is a big reason why they ended up winning it all. However, outside of Antoine Winfield Jr. in their secondary, I'm not really confident in that unit. So that's exactly why... Their first, and that's also my questions I have with that team. In terms of, of second place in that division, I have the New Orleans Saints. So their ceiling is nine and eight. Their floor is seven and ten. And their, my projected record for them is eight and nine. Uh, big reason and big reason only they have a quarterback competition. Right currently with Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill, it's looking like Taysom Hill is getting the first team reps in training camp at the moment. However, who knows how things are going to pan out with that competition. If it was up to me, I'd have Jameis Winston starting. But it's not up to me. And, and, but they do have a great head coach in Sean Payton who has the experience and knowledge to know exactly what to do. However, they have the best offensive line, which is going to benefit whoever's on, under center. And that's something Jameis Winston didn't have in Tampa Bay. And I think that would benefit him should he start. But my question here on the offensive side is their playmakers. They're very top-heavy because they have Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas. But outside of that, who do they have? Um, they lost Emmanuel Sanders. They lost Jared Cook this offseason. And they lost Drew Brees, which are three big blows to their, off to the, their offense. Um, some can debate whether Drew Brees truly helped or hurt that offense, but – Michael Thomas, he delayed his surgery, and now he's looking like he's going to miss a big chunk of this season. Um, so within the division, I have them ranked last in terms of playmakers. Um, so it's going to it's gonna be odd seeing uh, this Saints offense hit the field after what we've witnessed past few years at that. So, And then in terms of defense, defense, they have the second-best defense in the division, they have a really good run defense, led by you know Cameron Jordan on the defensive line, and Demario Davis with the linebacker unit. But my question here is, there Daniel Anyamata will be missing a four four games, uh, which is due to suspension. So that's a big hit to that defensive line. And outside of Demario Davis, who do they have at linebacker? There's a lot of questions. I'm not saying they won't prove themselves. But right now, I have them ranked second 
in terms of linebackers, mainly because of Demario Davis. Um, but hey, I have them ranked second in uh, defensive line as well because they are studs when it, it comes to you know the stopping the run, and it's led by Cameron Jordan. Although Daniel Daniel Anyamata is not there, they did draft a defensive lineman in the first round, so hopefully he can have that initial impact. And then in terms of secondary, I have them ranked second in the division. They have Malcolm Jenkins, they have uh, Marshawn Lattimore, and but my question here is, who's their cornerback to? Who? They lost to Norris Jenkins, and who's it going to be? Uh, Adebo, who they just drafted. Like, you don't know how he's going to perform. So, cornerback two is a question mark for them. I'm not concerned about their safeties, but I'm concerned about their corners. Uh, especially because Marshawn Lattimore had a down year last year, and he might be suspended. Who knows? As of right now, he's not suspended, but he could be facing suspension due to an arrest that he had this offseason. So, uh, just keep your eyes out for that. Uh, also, in terms of special teams, Special teams is a big impact. I didn't cover this within the, the, the Bucks, but the Bucks seem to have a second best kicker in the division and the third best returner based off of last year and also their, their pickups. I don't know who's going to be starting as, as their returner, but based off what I know, I have them ranked third. And then with the Saints, I ha- they have the third best kicker in Lutz, the third best punter, and the second best returner in, in, in this division. On to number three. Who do I have finishing third in the division? And that will would be the Atlanta Falcons. So for them, their ceiling I have seven and ten. Their floor I have five and twelve. The projected my projected record for them is six and eleven. And it's a, the big reason for that is their defense. Too many question marks on that defense. Uh, there's just a lot of unproven guys. And although they got Pease as the defense coordinator, he can only do so much. He can't get on the field and play. And outside of Grady Jarrett and Deion Jones, there's a lot of unproven guys. Dante Fowler was their big free agent signing last season, last all season, and he had a disappointing season. Like, he didn't provide what what they, you know, paid him big money for. So, hopefully, he turns things around. Um, but, as of right now, I have them ranked as the worst defense in this division. Uh, but, in terms of special teams, they have the best kicker in the division. They have, you know, the second best punter in the division. And I have them with the best returner in, in the division because they, saw, they went out and signed... Cordero Patterson this offseason, and I feel like that was a steal. He's going to provide some depth at running back, receiver, and he's going to get you some points on the special on special teams because that's what he does best. Uh, he's, he was one of the best returners last season, and I'm expecting him to carry that over to this season. Um, in terms of coaching, I already mentioned Pease, you know, and then Arthur Smith is their new head coach. He's offensive-minded. He's coming over from Tennessee. He did wonders with Ryan Tannehill, and he's going to do wonders with Matt Ryan. I think this system is going to be be Matt Ryan's best system he's been under since Kyle Shanahan. And we know what kind of shit show it was once Kyle Shanahan left Atlanta, but I think he's going to get him to not MVP level, but as close to MVP level as he possibly possibly can with the personnel that he has. Uh, And when I say that, is because as with with the offensive line, that's a big concern. Like they have the third best offensive line in my opinion in the division, and it's only because the Panthers are that bad. Um, they lost Alex Mack. The, the Falcons lost Alex Mack this off season, uh, so that was a big blow. I thought he was their best offensive lineman, but I'll, and then they got Jake Matthews, who's currently their best offensive lineman at left tackle. So that the offensive line is gonna play wonders because it's going to determine whether this offense is balanced or not. And I don't think it's going to be balanced enough to be more than average, in, in my opinion, this upcoming season. In terms of playmakers, they lost Julio Jones, 
we we all know that they traded him away to Tennessee. Um, but in terms of finance, like financially, it had to be done. But they replaced him with Kyle Pitts, who's a mismatch nightmare. I'm a huge fan of Kyle Pitts. You put him at tight end, you put him at receiver. Line him up wide, he has a mismatch against corners. Put him next to the offensive lineman inside, and he's going to have, you know, speed advantage over these linebackers. Most of these linebackers, I should say. So, I have them ranked, in terms of playmakers, third in the division. They they brought over Mike Davis from Carolina. He was Christian McCaffrey's backup last year, and he played phenomenal in place of Christian McCaffrey uh, last year. He had a big year. So if he could, you know, replicate what he did over there, then there's a possibility that this offense can be balanced and be above average. Uh, however, I, I don't I have a hard time believing that he'll re- replicate that exact season. And... Speaking of this offense, you can't miss out on Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley had a big year last year. He's He's been a really good receiver since he's came out of Alabama. This is his first time that he's going to be, you know, receiver number one with Julio Jones missing, well, now gone. When Julio Jones has missed time, he still put up big numbers. But now his question, can he, you know, step up to that receiver one role, which I think he can. But a sleeper in this offense is going to be Russell Gage. A lot of people are going to be having eyes on Kyle Pitts and Calvin Ridley and possibly even Mike Davis, but Russell Gage will be on fly under the radar and help this offense, you know, succeed and hopefully get some wins uh, here. So, hey, uh, let's just hope for the best for, for the Falcons. I mean, their success this season all depends on that defense. Because there's just too many questions. If the defense could at least be average, they might have a chance to make the playoffs. But that's a question to be asked. With that, it's down to fourth place in the division, and I have the Carolina Panthers. There's a a big gap in my ceiling for them and their floor for them, and I'll go into my reasons why. But for their ceiling, I have them as nine and eight, and for their floor, I have as four and thirteen. Realistically, though, I don't see them reaching their ceiling. I feel like they'll finish closer to their floor. Uh, so I have my projected record for them is five and twelve, which is why I have them in fourth place in the division. As for you know their offense, they got Sam Darnold this off season, and they traded away Teddy Bridgewater. I think Sam Darnold is going to bounce back this season. I think he's going to he's going to have the best season of his career. Main reason because he's not under Adam Gase. <laughs> so he, his offense coordinator here in uh, Carolina is Joe Brady, who did wonders in L- in LSU with Joe Burrow. He even coached in New Orleans uh, under Sean Payton. So he's a great offensive mind, uh, and I think he's going to help Sam Darnold reach his potential this upcoming season. And another big reason why I think he's gonna have might have his best career year is because of the playmakers they have surrounding him. Like, the dude has probably the best playmakers he's had his whole career, and it's short career. But you have Christian McCaffrey coming back from injury. They just drafted Chubba Hubbard to be his backup in in place of Mike Davis, and then at receiver you have DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, who he already had a connection with with his time in New York. And they just drafted uh, Terrence Marshall Jr. from LSU, who I thought was flying under the radar come draft, come draft day. I mean, people project him to be, you know, late second. I mean, late first, early second. And I and I think he might have a sneaky, you know, good rookie season where he's in a nominee for offensive uh, rookie of the year. Uh, then in terms of offensive line, I think this is where their success – lies heavy on. I mean, I said there was a big gap in their ceiling and their floor, and it's primarily because of the offensive line. They have the worst offensive line in their division, and there's no question about it. I mean, if they give Sam Darnold enough time to get the ball out of his hand, I think they'll do wonders. But they also, I'm not worried about Christian McCaffrey finding holes because Christian McCaffrey's Christian McCaffrey. Should he be healthy, you know? Uh, he He's dealt with the terrible offensive line since he's been in Carolina, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, 
but it's more on the Sam Darnold success because we seen what he did in New York when he didn't have a good offensive line. It was it was bad. As for defense, I have them with the third best ranked defense in this division, primarily because of their secondary. I have their, I have them with the best secondary in the division. It might come to some some surprise to folks, but I'm a big believer in J.C. Horn, who they drafted first in in the first round. I he I feel like he'll be a nominee for defensive rookie of the year. He's gonna have a defensive rookie of the year performance this season. Uh, MJD even went as far as saying that he's gonna have a Jalen Ramsey uh, impact uh, to that team, which very well might be true. I mean, I had him ranked as the number one corner in this draft class as a Georgia fan. I know firsthand of his impact on the field, and uh, I can't wait to see him on, uh, see what he can do in the NFL. But they, Carolina went out and signed A.J. Bouye this offseason to play across of J.C. Horn. And I think that's going to be a lot heavily. We've seen what A.J. Bouye and Jalen Ramsey were able to do in Jacksonville for that defense for those years that they played together. So, hey, don't be surprised if you see a similar situation over in Carolina this season with A.J. Bouye and J.C. Horn. Jeremy Chin was a defensive Rookie of the Year candidate last season. His impact was phenomenal. He, he, you know, he's a safety, but he comes down and plays linebacker at times. But expect him to continue his success from his rookie season and carry it over this season. And that's why I'm a big believer in their secondary. As for their linebackers, I have them ranked dead last in the division in terms of linebackers. Um, outside of Shaq Thompson, who do they really have? It's a big question mark. And you can say the same about the Saints and the Falcons. However, if we're going to rank DeMario Davis, Deion Jones, and Shaq Thompson, that's exactly how I went about my rankings. And Shaq Thompson is the worst of those three. So that's exactly why they're four. Uh, then as for defensive line, I have them ranked third in the division. And they have a lot of promise with Gross Matos that they just drafted. Uh, Brian Burns, who I think is an up-and-comer. He might, he might be a dark horse to win uh, Defensive Player of the Year this season should he stay healthy. And then at the defensive line, um, in the defensive tackle position, they have Derrick Brown, who they drafted last year, who had a solid year. I mean, that might be an understatement, but I think he's going to have a, a, a really good year this year. So defensive line, the only reason why they ranked third is because the Bucks and the Saints are in their division. But I feel like they're going to have a, you know, up-and-coming season this year. And they just, in terms of defensive line, I'm including edge rushers here. They just went out and got Hassan Reddick from the, the, the Cardinals. Uh, yeah, the, he played for the Cardinals last season. They got him this offseason in free agency uh, and to bring him over to play, uh, you know, outside linebacker. But he is a pass rusher, so I think he's going to have a, a big impact there. Uh and I mentioned in terms of the secondary, they have A.J. Bouye, J.C. Horn. But don't forget about Dante Jackson. He's he's a young guy. They even got uh, Troy Pride Jr. as well. And Justin uh, Burris as a opposite Jeremy Chin at the safety position. So this defense is up and coming. That's exactly why I have them ranked third uh, in the division, only behind Tampa and New Orleans because they are, you know, such juggernauts on the defensive side. But they rank over Atlanta here. And that's why the gap is where it is. They, they could finish third in the division, but I have them ranked fourth primarily because of the offensive line. I don't have belief in that unit. And also in terms of special teams, they have the worst kicker in the division. That's not saying much because there's great kickers in this division. In terms of punters, they rank first. Uh, this is based off last year's performance, but that's also because... They might have, they might have punted more than the other the, the other team, so they have a better chance of succeeding at that. And then in terms of returners, I have them ranked fourth. I don't know who the returner is going into the season because we are in training camp, but as of right now, I have them ranked fourth based off of what I know. And that's my breakdown uh, for the NFC South. I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to like, follow, subscribe and comment your thoughts on anything I said or just your opinion on how this division will end up, you know,
this upcoming season. Uh, just stay tuned for more breakdowns as I will be dropping another you know, video of the NFC East breakdown at the end of the week. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for Jovan's breakdowns of the AFC. And uh, enjoy. Make sure to tune in every week for a ep new episode of Bossy with Devin Jovan. Peace.